Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to Triangle Spotlight. I'm Suzanne Lynn, and I've got an amazing author with me today. Uh, author DCS has written the book called The T Axis. And man, that leaves a lot of questions. What the T Axis? Well, l- let's go ahead and start. First of all, welcome, DCS. I'm glad you're here. Hey, thanks. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so yeah. tell me, before we get into the name of the book, tell me what the book is about first. Okay, you give me the luxury of a couple of lines. I'll explain to you that. Uh, there's a guy, Ravi, a small town Indian guy who dies in the age 2005. And his brain is preserved for some reason. And fast forward to 2180, Murphy, a Caucasian man, he steps into a hospital to archive his memory. To archive his memory. Archive his memory is the most okay. normal thing to do at that time. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know, so, I can see that, yes. Yeah. And the hospital messes it up. His brain is damaged, and they're looking out for another brain. And then they hear about this brain of Ravi in India, which is in a pickle jar for the last 90 years. And they bring that over, put it into him, and here wakes up a new man who everybody looks at as Murphy. He looks like Murphy, but inside that is a mind of a small town Indian man who has seen the world only until 2005. Which means technology uh, in abundance has changed. That's, That's a huge change between what he remembers in 2005 and now it's 2100. He was a small town man. He's in a big city and uh, suddenly he sees the way people travel, artificial body parts. There's a lot of things out there. I mean, the way people even dress. When we watch shows from the 1950s, you know, yes. it's so different. You just smile and you go, wow, that was that was really yes. a different time. And now yes. it's multiplying. The change with technology is multiplying how much difference there is between 2005 and 2100. That's right. It's accelerating. The changes is accelerating. So what I think will happen in 2100, it might happen earlier than that. Uh, now, this guy is also missing his family of 100 years back. He's missing his little daughter, five years old, and who's all of 100 years now. Oh, wow. And he's remembering his family and wondering how to get back, how to go back, look, look them up search for them. The world has changed beyond any imagination. Okay, everybody that sees him now thinks he's Murphy because he's still That's in a Caucasian body with Ravi's yeah. mind. That's Interesting so he- concept. <laughs> that Thank is you. amazing. Let, let's go ahead and talk because I, I'm intrigued by the name of the book, the T-axis. I, at first I thought it was about dinosaurs. I don't know, for some reason, the T-axis, it sounds like a dinosaur <laughs> name. <laughs> right. Uh, the T-axis is actually, you know, in school you learn X, Y, Z axis. Any point in space you can define uh, as for the X, Y, Z axis. Now when you add the time to that, it's a time axis, so X, Y, Z, and T. So ah, gotcha. what I'm uh, showing you, you know, what I'm uh, trying to show here is the entire lifespan is just one fraction of an instant uh, when you look at the infinity of time. That explains the T-axis. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. It, you have to be fascinated with a subject like this. I mean, I am in right away with the idea of someone else's brain being in someone else's body. What was your fascination with this subject? Okay, I, I, I'm a weird guy. Uh, I'm fascinated by some weird <laughs> things. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I, I'm very much intrigued by the origin of time. When I say that, what I mean to say, when I close my eyes uh, and think uh, before I was born, or we, we go 100 years, 1,000 years, a million years back, at some point of time, the time started. And even before that, the clock was ticking. Sometimes I go into that. It's like a cave. Uh, you go into that and you don't know the answers, but it's very intriguing. Or uh, the infinity of space. Mm, it's too much to comprehend. If you keep going in one direction. Yeah. Yeah. Our mind is so uh, infinite. Where do you end yeah. up? I mean, you keep going. Yeah. That's right. Yes. So I it had this tagline in the book saying that we have five dimensions 
in this world, X, Y, Z, T, and the human mind. That's the last dimension you can think uh, infinity. Wow. Do you, what kind of education do you have? I mean, where did all this come from? <laughs> I mean, you're not, you know, I don't want to insult you by saying it, but, you know, you do something more than just the average worker, I'm guessing, because you're a very deep thinker and you think about space and time and the what ifs. Yes. Uh, you know, Susan, uh, I always believe when I close my eyes, I can see very clearly. That is the, wow. the uh, most of my plots they happen in the morning when I have woken up but I have not got up from the bed and my eyes close and thinking if something interesting strikes me I get up and make a note of that so that's how these plots come I'll tell you about a couple of them if you have the time uh, about this book it could yeah yes one one of them uh, let's see is uh, about the artificial heart so somewhere in this uh, century artificial heart was developed, put into man with a 200-year warranty. So the heart doesn't stop. <laughs> 200-year warranty. Yes. That's way better um, than my tires on my car, you know. <laughs> yeah, when you put a heart inside a man, you need that kind of reliability. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, and but how does a man die now? And what happens to the population? Oh, wow. You know? Yeah, the heart doesn't stop. So the now, now, the book is all fiction. Don't believe a word of what right. it says. But right. the, the way it goes is uh, that at some point of time, the human being up to the age of 110, 120, his brain starts getting slow. And in spite of all these artificial body parts, nothing much revolutionary has been done about the human brain. So at some point of time, the human brain gives up mm -hmm. and man programs his death, he will call a doctor and all his friends, relatives, they'll have a nice drink and see him off. Oh my gosh, that is so wild <laughs> to think about that. Yes. Oh, it uh, programs his death. Wow. So when he has to, somebody has to switch off the breaker, you know, the <laughs> circuit breaker. Uh, you know what, before we move off of the artificial heart, it kind of reminds me of the butterfly effect. Because if people are living longer, you know, then that's affecting um, so many things. I mean, so many tiny little things that changes the trajectory of life and the human race. Yes, it is. Uh, there are many things, uh, uh, paradoxes that I um, felt. One of them is uh, when the memory is archived, uh, the man doesn't remember anything of his childhood and his adult life. Take a case of a criminal, a lot of the time we say he is taken to crime because of his early life experiences. He had a tough time yeah. or whatever may be the case. Somebody has influenced him and he has become a criminal now. Now, if a man doesn't remember anything from his early life, can we say that he will not have a tendency for crime? <laughs> Uh, uh, the premise is that you take a criminal, archive his brain, send him out like a blank desk out there, and uh, you're not putting him in jail anymore. Interesting concept. So much to think about. And we haven't even moved off the heart. Let's talk about the artificial eyes. Yes, artificial eyes. Okay. Uh, that's a big world out there in the sense, uh, uh, once the artificial eyes have come, they the people, I mean, especially perhaps ladies or maybe the, the, the men folk, they are changing like they're changing the goggles, the color. You can mm -hmm. change the color of the eyes. Mm -hmm. And these eyes you can see far away, you can see from the legs of an eagle flying over there or the, count the legs of a centipede near you. Wow. Because all this, <laughs> all this uh, you know, versatility is built in. It has night vision, it can switch on infrared at night and see. All this is because it's artificial. That is one. Other thing is you are able to share with the guy sitting next to you what you're seeing. It's like somebody takes over your computer and then he sets it up for you. You're sharing a computer screen. So here is another guy who's uh, sharing what you are seeing. Maybe he's even guiding you where to go because he's seeing exactly what you're seeing. So we're just all one big computer. Yes, and only the human brain, which starts slowing down at some point of time, 
Uh, that's only human part. That's only what makes man human. Otherwise, his liver and kidneys and all of them have been replaced by artificial parts, which are very reliable. So I want to just recap for um, friends that are just joining us right now. We're talking to DCS about his book that he wrote, The T-Axis, which is about a man that gets a different brain put in to a different body, basically, and his experiences come from the man from 50 years ago. So um, obviously a lot of changes, but something you just said, that what makes someone human is the brain. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you about this. Does the spirit and the soul play into your book at all? No. That no. Uh, no. I, I'll tell you why, because I can't connect to these things. Okay. In spite of all this fiction, I'm still a man who is ruled by logic. And, uh, yeah. and the spirit and soul, that's, that's untangible. But you can replace body parts. Okay, very, very interesting. I'm glad that I asked that. So one of the things you talk about in your book is how travel is going to be different. Let's talk about that. Right. Okay. Uh, long distance travel. I remember coming from Europe to the U.S. and it can be tiring. Mm-hmm. You're sleeping at a different time, getting up at a different time. So here is a, uh, the person who is getting up, sitting on a chair that looks like those big fancy barber's chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and he's skiing in his destination, and this chair it wheels itself into the car, goes to the nearest terminal, and the barcodes are read, like the parcels in a conveyor. You go into the aircraft, the, the seat clicks into place. You are still sleeping with a blanket over you, and. You travel across the continent, get up, and you reach home in the chair, and the chair comes goes with you. Wow. You don't get up. You don't so stand you're, physically, you're still mm-hmm. physically going, but the process is basically you're asleep, and it's being done for you. That's right. Uh, but at the same time, there's a lot of use of holograms. Mm. That is, if I, I do not want to go, I'm sending my holographic image, which is generated far away, which can go and attend a meeting, which can uh, go and give customer service, do a lot of those things. So there's a lot of use. And one interesting thing I want to mention here about uh, a gym, a gymnasium. Okay. Ravi, Ravi steps into a gymnasium and there is a uh, typically, um, what do you call that? I'm just forgetting. Like <laughs> I'm a sorry. treadmill or he's on yes, a Yes, yeah. the treadmill, yes. Uh, so when he steps onto that, the nurse who's brought him there tells him you have to exercise. He says, why should I exercise? I've got an artificial heart. Why should I do the cardio? Good question. I like this guy yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, he can't argue much with the nurse. And then uh, he is on the treadmill and she says, where do you want to go? So he thinks it's a very lame joke because you can keep running for uh, any m- amount of time on a treadmill. You won't go anywhere. Yeah. But he says, okay, I want to go to Madras, Chennai, the Indian city, because he misses home. So immediately, like a jukebox, she keys in some numbers, and the scenery around him changes. The holographic images of the Marina Beach in Chennai comes alive. There's a warm, moist sea breeze that is coming to him. The noises of the beach, the smell. This is created by a guy who explains that in order to experience a place, you should feel the temperature, the noises, the smell, the moisture, and the scenery, all of this. So after this, uh, he can go anytime, take a walk across Hyde Park in London, or he can take a walk in Bombay Marine Drive, anywhere he wants for 10 minutes in the jukebox, and switch it off, come back to the real world. So I, I realize that this is science fiction. However... This there is grains of probabil- probability that this some of this stuff could happen, and that's what makes this. I don't want to say scary, but especially intriguing. I mean, you're you're not talking about things that can't possibly happen: artificial hearts, artificial eyes, memory archiving. Uh, I mean, it's a lot to think about. Yes, when you're reading this, it's 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 fiction with a grain of truth. 
Yes, and if I thought any of this was not plausible, I wouldn't write it. That's really? my own discipline. Yes, I believe somewhere. I can't prove it will happen, but I believe that these things can happen. Can you have me convinced they can too. Now, <laughs> uh, you love you love writing, don't you? You can just you can just feel the passion uh, and the imagination well, that you have. Yes, I, I, I let me put it very honestly. I am an imaginator. <laughs> I am not a writer. Really? Yes, I can. I work on writing. I write. I step back, leave it alone, come back and read it again, and do that a couple of times and see whether. In fact, I leave it for two days and change the font and read it as if I'm reading somebody else's writing to see whether there is a flow, whether there is discontinuity, whether it's actually interesting as much as I thought it would be. Quite often, I'm disappointed with my writing, and I have to work on that. But the plots that I come up with in my mind are quite unusual, I must say. It, it, I mean, this is a movie waiting to be made. Yes, some people have told me that, uh, but uh, uh, let's see. Some uh, someone yeah. has to hear about it, and uh, I'll be happy to give it to. Them. Actually, what I want is I want the younger generation to listen to this. Think, smile, think about the paradoxes. Think about what is happening around. Uh, okay, I'll tell you. I'll just go up the moment from the future to the past. Okay. Now, Ravi remembers how he was in his house uh, in the small town in a courtyard. There's no roof. They are lying down on a bed on a charpai, we call it, and uh, the sky is there with a lot of stars. And his father is a uh, Very serious kind of guy, but uh, he is always trying to teach Ravi something. And he asks him, "Okay, tell me about the direction. Can you make out the north, south, east, west?" Okay. Now, most of us would think about the pole star. Am I right, Susan? Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah, that's what comes to the mind. But here is the difference. You, it is much easier than looking for the pole star. You need to know two basic facts. One is that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Right. You know that. Yep. And the other one is that the moon doesn't have its own light; it reflects the sun's light. We also know that. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. Everyone knows that, but we never put two and two together. Now you look at the crescent of the moon. When you look at the crescent of the moon, we know that the moon is not shaped like that. The moon right. is actually a ball. Mm-hmm. Right. Now it's a moon, it's a ball, and someone is shining a torch on that ball from somewhere below the horizon, and that is why that part of the ball is lit up. Mm-hmm. That is why it forms a crescent in that direction. Now that torch is the sun. So any time you look at the crescent of the moon, you look outside, you look at the crescent of the moon, it's always pointing to the sun. Mm-hmm. and when you realize that if it is 8 o'clock in the evening you are looking at the direction that is west obviously and if you see the direction in the morning 5 o'clock obviously that's east right oh interesting yes yeah yeah when the moon is much easier to see unlike right. a pole star you're looking for a pole star is seen in the northern hemisphere you can't see in the southern hemisphere it's not such a bright star so the moon is always very easy to see and that's always telling you where is the sun mm-hmm. so uh, this is something i have told about 1000 people and everybody understood within few seconds but yes. no one remembers having read this anywhere it's not written in a book as far as i know it's a very good point i mean I, and i'm thinking some of the stuff that's in your book is foreshadowing what's going to happen that you know maybe this is the first that people will read about this just like your sun scenario that's right Uh, and uh, now i'm um, i have written about 20 chapters and i have just put out about four chapters and i would like to bring this up as a serial story mm-hmm. one after the other i am not very keen to make money this is not money for me at all okay. uh, because my bread and butter lies elsewhere so i want a lot of people to read this and there will be some people who are interested in reading more of this and uh, that's what i'm looking at and, and it's yeah. short it's an easy read right Yes, it's not very serious. It's told in the language of, I mean, in the through the eyes of Ravi, who's mm-hmm. a very ordinary guy. 
and uh, he, he he is just amazed at this new world and what's happening all around him and it's only 17 pages <laughs> yeah because this is only a couple of chapters now okay. and uh, then i will yeah i would like to put out one chapter every two weeks okay and uh, i don't know if you have that much time to interview me every two weeks but i will <laughs> definitely have some <laughs> <laughs> this is so interesting. So, I think I have to make time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I was just going to ask, where is the book available? It's on Amazon. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, the T-axis, if you look for the T-axis, there'll be two that will come up. One that I wrote in 2013, a hard copy book, and I've discontinued and withdrawn that. And this other one will pop up. Uh, that's a hyphen. The hyphen T hyphen access. Right, right. Yeah. IDCS, yeah, and that's the one you're going to want to find. And uh, we have so much more that we could talk about. We've got to come to an end. But is there is there a website? Is there a contact if someone is intrigued by this whole huge idea that they can get a hold of you and, and ask you questions? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll welcome that. There's nothing better than an interested reader, I tell you, to fire my energies. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get that email to our friends here. It's C-A-P-T-D-C-S-E-K-H-A-R at gmail.com. But it's just easier to look up the book, The T-Axis. Thank you again. Have a great day. Thank you, Susan. Thanks for joining Suzanne Lynn for the Triangle Spotlight every Monday here on WQBQ 1410, the voice of Lake County.